Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So this is a case dealing with the issue of lost opportunity and of a bank which has made an error, which they've admitted to, which, according to my client, has caused him serious and substantial losses because he was interested in buying a property. And because of the error that the bank made on his credit rating, he has been unable to buy a property and so lost the opportunity. And of course, in the area of property, buying and selling properties, you could obviously see how if you have to wait six months or a year to buy a house, that could be a substantial amount of money in a rising property market. Now this is quite an interesting case actually, I've quite enjoyed uh, researching this one uh, to look at really the issue of, of lost opportunities, to what extent a bank can be liable for banking errors which may appear to be small but which may have a much bigger, more massive knock-on effect as far as uh, the losses caused to the client are. So the facts of the case essentially are my client is a, in a, a decent job. Uh, he took out a loan with a major bank which he repaid in 2012. Um, but unfortunately, the bank put a black mark on his uh, credit rating with Experian so that uh, and they, they marked him down as having defaulted on one of the payments of the loan. Now, that's obviously quite a, a, a significant error, and in fact, it was wrong. Now, uh, he had difficulty obtaining bits of credit borrowings, perhaps he had a higher rate on his credit cards over the years from 2012 to 2015. Uh, but it wasn't until late 2015 when he was looking at buying a property that the issue you know, became that much more serious because essentially the broker uh, whom he approached in 2015 told him that because he had a default on his credit record he wouldn't be able to get a mortgage and then that was the end and that was the, a, an end of it. He was looking to buy a property for £160,000. Okay, so he complained to the bank. The bank uh, upheld the decision that they had made an error in putting a default on his record. It should have been a missed payment, they said, which is less serious. Um, they offered him five hundred. pounds 600 pounds in total compensation now he wasn't interested he'd lost by this point he had been pulling his hair out trying to get them to deal with the issue when they finally had dealt dealt with the issue they made in his view a derisory offer the boat had the ship had sailed on his house purchase uh, it was now six months later he made a claim to the financial ombudsman service saying that they really owed him the region of 20,000 pounds although he hadn't really very carefully calculated that figure, that was a bit of a finger in the air. Uh, and moreover that he had, in the intervening period during 2016, we're now into August, uh, in the intervening period he had uh, not, he, his salary had dropped and so he couldn't afford a £160,000 house, a mortgage on a £160,000 house, he could only afford one on a grand house. Um, uh, you know, plus all the problems of joining the market perhaps late in the year. Now, although I'm not that, I'm not how much, how, I'm not sure how much of that, 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 how much of a problem that is in fact. So, there's the, the facts in a nutshell. Now, let's have a look at what the law says about this sort of a situation. Well, the first thing is that when it comes to whether it's contract, um, this you could, I guess, imply a term of contract into the the loan that he had with the bank to take, you know, reasonable care and skill. Uh, you could bring, I guess, a negligence claim against the banks for the error. Either way, you're looking at a, you know, loss. Either way, you'd have access to the sort of losses that he says have been occurred um, with the caveat that the losses need to have been reasonably foreseeable not too remote so at the time that the bank makes the error the bank has got to foresee that the losses have actually occurred i.e. the lost opportunity of buying a house at a certain point in the housing market cycle 
um, that you know was reasonably foreseeable. It could have been envisaged that that error could have caused that kind of damage, and it wasn't too remote. Uh, well, I think in this case, actually, yes, that is perfectly foreseeable and not too remote. If you put a default on someone's credit rating as a bank, it's pretty clear, isn't it, that it's going to have an impact on their ability to borrow money. And one of the classic things that you borrow money for is uh, for buying a house. So I don't think that, that's, a, that's a major issue there. Uh, I should just quickly mention that in this case there's not an issue of liability. The banks have admitted to having made the error. Um, be careful in, in this if you are bringing a claim through the small claims track, well, bringing a claim period, you've got to be careful that the banks may have made you a goodwill offer saying, well, we're going to offer you this money, but we don't effectively admit legal liability. Now, if they've done that, then you've got to overcome the hurdle of proving that they've made an error in the first place. And this is a typical problem in PPI claims, where banks make goodwill gestures of small amounts of money, and then if the consumers don't like it, <laughs> they then have to sue them and prove that the PPI was missold, as well as prove that the amount of money that the bank paid them was too low. Do you see what I mean? It's a rather cunning uh, te tactic technique that a bank has as a big commercially uh, morally neutral corporate animal is likely, is likely to deploy. Anyway, not a problem in this case. So that's reasonable and remoteness, but um, you know, there's still a part of me which is thinking, is a county court judge really likely on the, as a result of a bank error to award a consumer £20,000 plus because he couldn't have bought a property back in January 2016 and now six, seven, eight months later he's only just had that uh, that uh, black mark removed from, from his record as a court and so he can buy a property. Is a court really likely to give him that much money? Well, uh, let's come on to problem. Now, if I'm in the bank's position and I'm faced with a claim of this complexion, I am think, and let's be honest, that the, probably the best way of stress testing your claim is to put the hat of the bank on, put the hat of the nasty Rottweiler banking lawyer's uh, hat on and just see how you can knock holes in a particular claimant's claim. You may throw money at this if you're a bank. You may not like the idea that if you make an error, people can start claiming for all sorts of massive lost opportunity claims, yeah? Judges might not like the idea. And let's be, let's be honest, I was speaking to a barrister only last week in a major bank set of chambers in London who was saying the climate has changed. 15 or 20 years ago, the courts were more sympathetic towards consumers. These days, they're less sympathetic and they tend, there's a tendency, he says, that they'll fine for banks against consumers. So, um, so I am that, that bank. You know what I'm going to look at? I'm going to look at these areas. I'm going to look at, well, did our error really cause the loss? Did it really cause the loss? Were there other reasons uh, around the client not being able to get a mortgage? Perhaps other considerations, other factors, um, nothing to do with the default might have prevented this particular person from getting a mortgage. Perhaps if he'd gone to a different broker he'd, he wouldn't have had the same problem. Perhaps there are certain uh, brokers, certain lenders who are perfectly happy to deal with someone who's got a default rating on their credit file. Uh, you can see how they could run arguments like that, that well he could have got a mortgage, it would have just, if he tried harder, he didn't try hard and he could have got a mortgage and but maybe it would have been a higher interest rate, okay, but he could, still could have got one. Um, you know, what's the evidence that the that this person was serious? It just looks as if he approached one broker who told him not to bother and then he went away. Was he really committed to going through with a property purchase? Well, the best evidence of that would be at the time the claim hit the county court, has he actually bought a property? Now, he can't buy a 160 grand one, but has he bought a 120 grand one? 
Uh, so you'd want to marshal your evidence against the bank to demonstrate that you are, you, you know, you are an actual, a, actual, actual active buyer looking for a mortgage. Now, the other area might be, well, mitigation. Do, there is a duty to mitigate your loss. So if a bank has made an error, they're not necessarily liable for the full extent of your losses if you've not taken reasonable, reasonably prompt steps to mitigate your loss. Now, in this case, let's say he'd left the problem of his... Well, in this case, they might argue, look, we made the error in 2012. He didn't bring it to our attention until three to four years later. Uh, you know, if he'd acted a reason, like a reasonable person, he would have dealt with the problem back in 2012, and these losses would never have occurred. So he had a duty to mitigate his loss by rectifying our mistake, basically. And in those sorts of situations, you can, the court may make a, a lesser award to reflect the fact that he had a duty to mitigate. I'm not sure that particular argument is going to fly in this case, because, you know, people have black marks on their credit ratings, and is a reasonable person expected to be checking Experian um, to see what um, black marks there are on the credit record? Well, no, only when they actually are going to go about applying for a mortgage to buy a property. So that may not be such a strong argument. Now, so, but I think that, the, well, the other arguments that the banks might deploy, and I think these are sort of slightly more attractive and sneaky ones, are they might say that, well, we don't use that particular credit reference agency. So the broker gave the guy wrong advice. Just because Experian has a black mark, Equifax may not. And in fact, if you look at the, uh, if you look into this area, and I had a look at Money Saving Expert to see what they said about the uh, issue of, just to familiarise myself, inform myself better about the credit ratings and how these credit reference agencies work. You know, it, it's very much a um, uh, different lenders are attracted by different sorts of consumers. Some do like the riskier consumer. Some, uh, you know, are more bland, more vanilla, and they just they will take uh, they will you know make a decision entirely on whether or not someone has got a default on their credit record. But there are multifarious different uh, lenders and multifarious different in individual you know, risk assessments, requirements, etc., credit record requirements, credit history requirements, rather. So it's not that these credit reference agency black marks aren't the be-all and end-all. The credit reference agency are just supplying a service to lenders that many lenders will just use as one of one of many number of factors. So you can see a quite a sneaky argument here in which they say, well, we wouldn't have preferred to Experian anyway, and the broker should have the broker should have just let the application for a loan go through. Uh, how many brokers did he actually apply? How hard did he try? Coming back to that uh, initial argument. So um, those are, you know, a variety of different dangers that the client in this particular case is uh, facing. Um, now, I think that so I think probably the, the, the causation is, is the biggest issue. Uh, and in this case, there was a, or there is, seems to be emerging an issue around other uh, companies, communications companies, in fact, I guess mobile phone or BT, uh, there appear to be other black marks on his credit rating. Um, and indeed, in the letter in which the bank accepted liability and made him an offer of £600, they mentioned this fact that there were other defaults. I don't know whether there were defaults or whether there were missed payments. The client initially said that that was completely wrong, but now he's not so sure. Now that obviously could really muddy the waters. And the key issue for the client there is whether or not, uh, you know, they actually were the main cause for the reduction in his credit rating. In this particular case, the gentleman had saw, it was quite, you know, quite vivid, saw his credit rating go from something like 985, which is very high, to 700 plus, which is pretty, aver pretty average. 
So, you know, the actual uh, Experian credit report is, uh, you know, quite crystal clear. But the issue is obviously whether these communications companies, missed payments, defaults, whatever they are, whether they appeared on the Experian report um, and whether they were causative of this drop from 985 to uh, 700 plus. A fly in the ointment, quite, could be quite a serious fly in the ointment for this case. But I'm going to, for the purposes of keeping this um, vlog general, I'm going to sidestep that issue and imagine a situation in which that isn't the case. Okay. So here I come on to conclude this vlog um, with, you know, the, the sort of advice that I would give to the client. I would be saying to the client this, look, here I am on the phone to the client. This is the sort of thing that I, that I do. This is, my, uh, this, is, this, is, this is part and parcel of my work, my, my daily work as a lawyer. So the client, I've got, got this client. I've had a look at the papers. He wants a preliminary view. He doesn't want to spend a load of money on this. He doesn't want a counsel's advice. He wants a preliminary view from a lawyer. And as lawyers, we should be just providing that sort of preliminary view and taking the risk and putting ourselves on the line a little bit, okay, even with that adequate evidence. So I'm saying to him, look, you know what? I actually think this has got potential. You've got a, a, a lost opportunity. You've got your drop in your salary. You, 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 you've got a broker telling you don't even bother because of this black mark on your credit record. It's clearly not uh, too remote. It's clearly reasonably foreseeable. And it's clearly causative of your failed application. You couldn't, you couldn't go any further after that broker had told you, look mate, you're not gonna get a mortgage. So you've, you've given up. Um, so that is what the first thing that I'll say to him. But I will then come on to say, but you know what, I'm just not quite sure what a court is likely to award. And the issue here for you is going to be uh, calculating your losses. Uh, and you know, the, the, the thing that's going to play on a, mar uh, on a judge's mind is, is he really as a result of a small error by a bank? And in the light of all these, what, grey, muddled sort of um, lack of causation, duty to mitigate type arguments that a bank might make if you sued them in court, is the judge really going to award you your five-figure sum plus, you know? Is he going to say, well, this guy could have bought a house for 160000 that ship has now sailed, he's now lost his, let's, you know, make this more serious in this case, is he's actually lost his job, can't get any loans, uh, his, the door has closed on him getting on the, on the housing ladder, you know, over a period of 10, 15 years, he may never get on the housing ladder now. Am I really going to start compensating this consumer with five-figure sums? If I am, I'm going to want very cogent, tangible proof of all of the above. I'm going to want to see uh, not just uh, a broker telling him, look, you, you're not going to get a mortgage because of a black mark on your credit record. I'm going to want to see an application going through. I'm going to want to see, a, you know, an exchange of contracts on a property that's actually the wheels have come off it because last minute the lender has checked with the credit reference agency and found there's a black mark on your record. You know, for policy reasons as a judge, I'm not going to want to start paying out five figures for kind of slightly slightly speculative claims when it comes to the quantum um, unless I can really see concrete cogent evidence that this uh, really did cause the amount of losses that this particular client is claiming for. Don't, don't forget the appeal to the financial ombudsman service for £20,000. Okay so you can see how that leaves you with the sort of a position of, well, okay, I think in a way you have got a claim. It did have an effect on your ability to get a property. Uh, nevertheless, uh, for policy reasons and for reasons of causation, due to mitigate and so on, it, it, a, a, a sum as large as 20,000 doesn't quite seem right. Now, what I've done in this particular case, in fact, is, well, just simply being quite common sense and matter of fact, and looked by reference to land registry data, 
at the increase in the value of property in the United Kingdom over the past year. And I have, you know, for a property of this sort of scale, you can actually access this data quite, quite easily. And I've used a, a site, finger in the air approach, but that's fine. You've got to start somewhere of around about 5% of increase in property. 160 grand property increasing by that value. Let's say that the client, hopefully, in order to really bolster his claim, he will be close to purchasing the property by the time this comes to the front of the judge. He can say to the court, look, I have lost the opportunity to, to buy this property. Uh, I've bought the property I've actually bought is, is a, a year later. It's the whole thing, this bank's error sent me back a whole year. I want 5%. Uh, increase. Uh, I want the five percent increase between the, the value of the property if I bought it then, the fact that I'm buying it now, uh, and I've calculated that to be around the five thousand pound mark. Now, that's a reasonably nice amount of money. It's not too much. It's not the rise rate. It's a lot more than the five hundred, six hundred that was offered by the bank. And you can just you can see how the client could move forward with that claim. It's a small claim, so he's not going to spend a lot of money on lawyers because a small claims track. It's all about not, not lawyers not being involved. Have a look at my uh, blog on how to bring a small claim for more information on that. Um, so you can just it's, just, it's all about being sensible about the sort of the right remedy for the particular fault that you're looking for a remedy for. A bank is likely as a broad brush approach to just pay out small amounts of money for these sorts of bank errors unless you can produce substantial evidence. Well, even if you produce substantial evidence, they aren't going to pay you out more. They're going to let you sue them because they don't, they don't care, quite frankly. Uh, they haven't got the resources to take uh, interest in the particular circumstances of your case. So um, that's the position. And I think that's kind of like the value of the claim. Unfortunately, in the case of this particular client, there may be a spanner in the works, which will be this issue of whether or not he's got other black marks on his credit rating from these communication companies that would break the link of causation and definitely would, I think, uh, be a win for the banks and make bringing this litigation pretty much worthwhile, uh, pretty much worthless, sorry. So there it is, uh, quite an interesting uh, case. Um, and I think, and I dare say this happens quite frequently. Uh, I think probably the conclusions that you can draw from it are that Yes, the English law does allow you to sue for lost opportunity if you can marshal the evidence. Um, you know, for example, one example of, of cogent evidence might be an email from the broker. This is something that I've asked my client for, you know, saying, I've been around a few lenders, I've mentioned this default on your uh, credit record, they've all told me to go whistle. There's no way they're going to make you uh, a mortgage on a 160 grand property. You know, that's the sort of cogent evidence you're looking for, as well as perhaps actually having moved ahead with the sale now, as well as the evidence, cogent evidence of the increase in property that has been enjoyed in the particular area in which you're intending to buy. So you can see how a bank could be held responsible for a lost opportunity of that sort. And this could be quite a nice claim under the 10 grand, 10 grand mark to take through the county courts. Um, but for this one, this, this one fly in the ointment. Um, so nevertheless, you can see how um, there are degrees in which a judge is likely, for policy reasons perhaps, give you a substantial award. I mean, let's take a case where someone might have lost the opportunity to buy a property at an auction that had been, let's say, completely undervalued by error by the auction house itself, such you were buying it for 10,000, it was actually, when it was done up, worth 100,000. You can see how in that example, it might be too remote, the losses might be too remote, um, and the, the court might not uphold a ruling that you've lost the opportunity to buy a property that's you know, exponentially increased in value, and just for a small fault, hold a bank liable for you know, a set of six-figure sum. You can see how that could be too remote and not reasonably foreseeable. On the other hand, um, if you're you know, about to exchange on a property, and the whole thing falls through and you've got 
probably got legal costs by then, a 20 grand claim uh, might be a, a realistic claim to make. And of course, finally, don't forget the issue of causation, that there aren't any other factors that the, the bank's lawyers can latch onto to say that even though they have made an error, even though you have suffered loss, it wasn't but for their, it was but for their error, but for their error with the losses have been incurred, there's a good legal but for test uh, that can be applied, um, you know, would the losses have occurred? Maybe not if there were other factors involved. Okay, well, thank you very much. As usual, please do not hesitate to comment if you've got a similar case in this area. And the best way of doing it is summarising your case in an email to info at redwoodlegal.co.uk. Uh, thank, thank you very much indeed for listening in. Bye for now.